Between 1938 and 1978, Quarry Hill was the location of what was at that time the largest social housing complex in the United Kingdom. The flats were designed to house up to 3,000 people, but these weren't the first people to inhabit the area. In fact, it is believed that people have lived on Quarry Hill for almost 3,000 years. It is likely that Quarry Hill was occupied first by a tribe of early Britons. Claims have been made that Quarry Hill was later the site of a Roman fort called Cambodunmum. Ralph Thorsby, the famous Leeds antiquarian, who was born in Leeds in 1658 and is widely credited with being the first historian of the city, described that at the ascent of Quarry Hill was the remains of a very large camp with very deep trenches, but he was unable to say if it was Roman or Saxon in origin. By this time, the area had already started to be developed. Quarry Hill is located at the eastern edge of Leeds city centre, roughly surrounded by the A61, the A653 and the A64M although Quarry Hill certainly extended beyond this to the north in the past. During my research, more than once, I came across suggestions the area had once been called Quarrel Hill, but I was unable to discover authentic sources of this information. What is clear is that Quarry Hill has enjoyed varied uses. For example, in 1645, when bubonic plague struck in Leeds, special cabins were erected on Quarry Hill for infected individuals. Watchmen were appointed to feed these people and ensure they stayed in the cabins. By the 18th century, three spas were extremely popular on Quarry Hill and the St Peter's Well had more than a local reputation. Ralph Thorsby attended them in hope of maintaining his health he described the waters as being intensely cold and very beneficial for those afflicted by rheumatism, weakness and rickets. In the 1850s, two members of the Leeds Foreign Affairs Committee opened a Turkish bath on the site. It was one of the first Victorian Turkish baths in England and was located at number 4 High Street, seen here in the photograph. It continued into the early 20th century. Quarry Hill was also well known for bull baiting and it is thought the pit was located there to attract visitors to the spas. The area was also famous as the site of a ducking stool at the end of Lady Lane where women underwent a watery ordeal after being accused of being a common scold and daily making strife and discord amongst her neighbours. Slowly, the whole area declined and became infamous for its slum dwellings and high crime rates. By Victorian times, Quarry Hill was an area of tightly packed, back-to-back, -back, terraced housing. Cholera outbreaks spread through unpiped water from sewage-infected wells, and there were as many as 50 public houses offering alternative drinks to the residents of Quarry Hill. Appalling environmental conditions dogged every effort to improve the lifestyle of the poor. One brave attempt was the opening of the Good Shepherd Mission in 1882. T. H. Brameld worked in the area for 55 years and described the difficulties he had in trying to open a youth club. The whole club was infested with vermin. He described thousands of creatures crawling about the buildings and even interrupting work in Sunday school whilst they slaughtered the rats in great numbers. Lemon Street was one of the main thoroughfares aligned roughly north to south and included housing that was typical of the district and indeed the city at that time. The census from 1881 for Lemon Street provides names, occupations 
and places of birth of the residents and shows the majority of people working in manufacturing jobs and labouring. 17 of the 25 individuals listed on this page were born in Leeds, but we find six of the residents were born in Ireland. Many people from Ireland migrated to Leeds for work at this time. Take a look at the residents of number 68 for example. James and Bridget Higgins are living with their Irish born daughter and son who was born in Howden in Yorkshire. And they are providing lodgings to two 30 year old Irish men who are employed as outdoor labourers. We are unable to tell if the residents knew of each other before but the lodgers are likely to be contributing to the Higgins income and have the benefit of a roof over their head as they establish themselves in a new city. The censuses allow us to follow changes in the area over time. This census is from 20 years later. Now living at number 68, there is a 68 year old tobacconist and a 41 year old hand sewn shoemaker who is boarding with her. Once again we see Irish and Scottish migrants living on the street and at number 60 is Adolf Goodall of Russian descent. It is likely he is one of the many Jewish migrants that have escaped from Eastern Russia to Leeds at the end of the Victorian period. By this time there was a large Jewish community in Leeds, particularly on the nearby Leylands. Many of the jobs continue to be in manufacturing, but there appears to be more residents working on their own accord, hawking fish and vegetables for example. The detail on this census is particularly good and it is amazing to see what the residents of Quarry Hill were up to. If we move a little further along Lemon Street, we meet 13 year old Florence Ronicol, who is a part time errand girl and her father, Henry, who is a mousetrap manufacturer working from home. At the same time, we can consider the struggles of the people of Quarry Hill in this period. At number two, Dolby Court, there is a 50 year old Patrick MacDonald, his 27 year old daughter, who has been blind since infancy, a second daughter and her two children, and an 18 year old son, all living in the same house. This photograph shows Dolby Court with single storey accommodation accessed by an arch from Lemon Street. Landlords made use of every available space, infill building to provide workers housing without regard to public health. It is difficult to understand how families coped in such cramped and in sanitary conditions. In 1890, the Housing of the Working Classes Act was passed, which allowed councils to buy what were described as slum properties from landlords for redevelopment. In 1901, Leeds began a programme of improvements in the Quarry Hill area. Back-to-back -back properties were slowly bought up and cleared under the Quarry Hill Insanitary Area Scheme. The scheme covered 50 acres and 9,000 residents. Compulsory purchase began in 1902. It was the intention to demolish the buildings over a number of years and by 1914 about half of them had been cleared. In some respects it was just as well that clearance was slow because the council found it uneconomical to provide alternative accommodation at the rent levels that the displaced tenants could afford. Over time the community was broken up and the residents were dispersed to other parts of the city. In the mid 1930s the council unveiled plans to build Quarry Hill flats on the site and in 1936 construction commenced. It was one of the most revolutionary housing schemes in England. Designed in 1934 by R. A. H. Livett, the Director of Housing and later City Architect for Leeds, 
Its design was strongly influenced by developments in Europe, specifically the Karl Marx Hof in Vienna. The construction was noted for its sheer size and modernist design. It had radical and modern features such as solid fuel ranges, electric lighting, a state-of-the-art refuse disposal system and communal facilities. When the first stage opened in 1938, it was the envy of every local authority and it became internationally famous. The flats were designed to house 3,000 people and the use of the moping system of construction using prefabricated blocks of stressed steel and concrete removed some of the need for skilled labour and expensive brickwork. The flats had an iconic look and only 14% of the site was taken up by buildings. The rest was open space including gardens and play areas for children. Properties had balconies and open views often across the city. There is little doubt the flats provided improved living conditions for many of the residents. At the same time as the slum clearances were taking place, the council were taking the opportunity to improve and widen existing road networks. This photo is taken at the junction of Lady Lane and the road called Quarry Hill. Lady Beck is to the left and is still uncovered at this time. Opposite we can see St Anne's Lane leading up onto Quarry Hill. Take a look at the man on the roof of the building on the corner. They are planning to remove these buildings and the newly widened Regent Street will join Eastgate along here in the future. The road known as Quarry Hill was widened at the start of the 1900s and became New York Road, which ran through to Vicar Lane and North Street and led to the St Mary's area being increasingly isolated from the rest of Quarry Hill. The greater part of Quarry Hill, south of New York Road, is on the right of the photo. What I also find interesting in this photograph is how recognisably higher Quarry Hill is to the rest of the area around it. In the 1960s and 1970s, the A64M moved into this space and except for access via a concrete footbridge, the St Mary's area was cut off from Quarry Hill completely. Despite the prestige and pride that heralded the arrival of the Quarry Hill Flats, their life was short-lived. Due to social problems and poor maintenance, demolition of Quarry Hill Flats began in 1975 and was completed by 1978. Some people argue the council used repairable defects as a pretext for demolition. But for the first time in a long time, no one was now living on Quarry Hill. For a while, the only buildings remaining were a collection of factory buildings on the corner of Duke Street and York Street. The concrete bridge that had once taken school children from the flats across to the schools on the north side of the A64M remained, but fewer people crossed over it. Slowly though, buildings were reintroduced. First there was the West Yorkshire Playhouse in 1990, then the impressive Quarry House in 1992. The Leeds College of Music moved in in 1998 and more recently the Leeds City College has taken up residence in its new £60 million campus. As we look across the site now it is hard to believe what has taken place on Quarry Hill in the past. Almost every physical link with the past has gone. But soon there will be residents on Quarry Hill once again as the Soyo buildings offer the chance for people to live in what is now labelled the cultural quarter of Leeds city centre. Soyo is a brand new £300 million project creating a new neighbourhood on Quarry Hill 
and the first phase of residential development for New York Square is due for completion in 2022. Just like the residents of the flats in the past, the apartments will afford great views of the city. And so the story of Quarry Hill continues. New people are moving in once again, where once other people have lived, in flats that were for a time the envy of the world. Flats built to offer the people of Leeds accommodation of a standard they deserve. Flats built where others had once lived, tightly packed together but all making their way in life on Quarry Hill and contributing to the story of the city of Leeds. <laughs>